types of and we have really weird things. There, essentially, there are two types of, uh, of um, arguments in debate: case debate and theory debate. Yeah, all arguments can be put into either one of those two categories. What is case debate? Uh, generally, like on topic argumentation. You're talking about the, the topic given to yep. you. Politics is going on. Is exactly. It's everything, case debate is everything that is related to the topic. Theory debate, on the other hand, is how we debate, right? It is, you should be debating in this way because it's good for X, Y, and Z reasons, okay? Does that make sense? And in theory, there are people who like to divide theory into two areas, right? So we have case debate and then we have theory debate. There are people who like to divide it into topicality and everything else. I think that is an okay way to divide theory because topicality is kind of its own special thing. So can somebody give me the first part of the shell of the, top, of the topicality? Or the first letter? Okay. A. Is the Inter. <laughs> Thank you. A is the inter. Yeah. Um, for topicality, because topicality is a question of what we are debating, sometimes people call this the definition. I think that even whether you put definition or you put inter, you're still going to end up saying definition is X, Y, or Z. Okay. What is the next part of the top calorie shell? Somebody besides me. I was going to say actually too. <laughs> Somebody tell me what the B is on the theory. The yeah, the violation. What is the violation? Super simple. Wrong. Yeah, how are they not on topic, right? Now let me back up real quick, I probably jumped the gun. You understand, everybody understands what topicality is, right? Uh, sort of, I haven't really okay. gotten a lot. I'm jumping the gun, cool, that's totally fine. So um, let's say we have, uh, should uh, increase, um, Your, uh, we have a resolution that's about the United States federal government should significantly increase its military intervention in Syria. One of the things that's going to come up is what is military intervention? There's a lot of different definitions of what military intervention is, right? Because then you're going to make, if I'm the app, I'm going to make a plan that has to do with military intervention. So it's going to be something like, you know, I mean, even if I just say something like the United States federal government should significantly increase its military intervention in Syria by doing X, Y, and Z, right? What, I still don't, like, like, what is military intervention, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say, like, the AF runs something like military intervention is uh, moving the, the fifth fleet into the Mediterranean Sea, okay? So the topic is, like, uh, the uh, differences the definitions of yeah, it's a question of definitions. Okay. It's a question of what are we debating, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say I move like the fifth, my plan is to move the fifth fleet into the Mediterranean Sea, okay? Um, well, I don't know about you, but you're not actually intervening in something, you're just moving something, right? So if I'm on the neg, I'd be like, mm, look, <laughs> you're totally not on topic. You're not even in the freaking country, okay? <laughs> so I would say, I would run a definition and I would say something like, the United States, or uh, military intervention is X, Y, or Z according to the Department of Defense, okay? Cool, does that help clear up what that is? Okay. So, I would say uh, military intervention is this, you violate because you're moving the fifth fleet, you're not actually intervening in the country of Syria, and you're not actually interacting. The AF may come back and say, well, uh, military intervention, uh, or moving, actually, we'll get, we'll get back to that. What's the next part of this? Like the seat? Yeah, standards. standards. The standards are reasons why your interpretation is dope AF. Not joking. 
It's the reasons why the judge should prefer your definition. So the most common, can somebody give me the three most common that aren't on this side of the room standards? The three most uh, common that you'll hear. Ground. Okay, uh, no, but ground. ground. Anybody else? You're close though. You're you're on you're you're heading in the right direction. Anybody else? The oh, most right, huh? Oh wait, was it right something? Is it? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes bright line is a popular one too, but the three most popular standards that you'll hear is grounds, limits, and predictability. I don't know if you can see that with the computer screen from the way, sorry. It's grounds, limits, and predictability. Um, here's what I'll say. Uh, a lot of coaches will say that all three of these things mean the same thing. Uh, you can also, these are very generic. You can run whatever the hell you want, okay? Why do we say ground? We say ground because if I am prepping the negative against that resolution, and I'm ready for like actual boots on the ground intervention, you've just stolen all of my ground from me. So I can't actually run my diss out about boots on the ground. Does that make sense? Limits. I think limits and ground are the same thing, but that's my personal opinion. Um, I think limits, some will say like limits like explodes, like limits is like an explosion of ground, like the app suddenly gets to solve for things related to the Mediterranean Sea or power projection regarding the United States. To me, limits is like, it's an explosion of the range of, of, of things that the app can solve for. That is what limits to me are, and I, to me, it's, like, it's the same thing as kind of ground. It's kind of the same thing as ground. Whether you're exploding af limit or you're exploding af ground or stealing name ground, it's still a ground issue to me. The third one is predictability. Again, these are the most common. These are not ones you have to run. The third is predictability. Um, moving the fifth fleet into the Mediterranean Sea is not very predictable, right? So you lose out on certain arguments that you could make. Um, in the debate because the debate's not predictable for the negative. Does that make sense? So, to me, all three of these are kind of the same, but debaters will kind of mesh them and say different things about them and say why are, why are predictable limits good or predictable ground good, that sort of thing. These are the generic, though. If you come up and you run a T-shell that begins like this, and you have grounds, limits, and predictability, you're in business. There's a coach in SoCal who loves to talk about his favorite um, standard that he's ever heard, and it's uh, Orwellian doublespeak. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cool standard, <laughs> right? Is that, so, yeah, is that Jake Yeah, that's her. <laughs> that's a really cool standard. So you can get creative with these. This is just super, this is the generic shell, this is the generic area where a lot of people Spend a lot of time. Yeah. How many standards are there? Is it like it's it, it's like it's, if you Wikipedia, the answer is twelve. If right. You're smart. The answer is infinity. Right. I mean, like for example, UOP, um, they run one standard, and that's limits, because um, I don't remember what the reasoning exactly is from Steve, but I mean, like I think it falls along the line of they're all kind of all three of these are the same. Uh -huh. Just run one. And then if they have to go for theory later on in the debate, they blow up the limits standards. Does that make sense? Um, so some debaters will run like five, some debaters will run two. And they, like again, these are the generic ones. Some debaters will run grammar, like the grammatical structure of the resolution calls upon us to do this. Um, the, uh, Another one is bright lines. You said bright line earlier. Um, uh, there's, but again, like they're all debatable, right? We've all kind of have agreed on the structure of theory. We haven't agreed on everything else about theory. Does that make sense? Cool. What is the final thing on the T-shell? Yeah, voters. And voters, 
are your impacts. They essentially function as impacts. Voters are, why should I give a shit about the t shop Right? Voters are usually, again, the generic ones are um, education, woo education, fairness, and then everybody puts uh, a priori, however you decide to pronounce it, which means a priori means adjudicate this first. Right, because theories are always questions that should come before case debate because theory is about how we debate. Theory is, this is the most important thing we should be talking about right now because otherwise this activity isn't educational and it isn't fair. Cool? If, like, in many ways, this is kind of like what you would see with like a disad a little bit, like the uniqueness, the link, the internal links, and the impacts. Why should I give a shit? Why does this matter? Like, why does my definition matter? Right, and then like, your definition. Okay? Cool. Um, depending on what kind of team you're a part of, what um, kind of environment that you're in, like it all kind of varies. Some people run T2 as a time suck. Some people run T2 like have strategic viability by the time the MO comes around. Um, some people run T because it's actually legitimate. And people have different opinions about whether or not you should run theory if it's just gonna be a time suck, right? To like bait people into a theory uh, debate. It depends on what kind of environment you're in. Whatever, like, <laughs> everybody has different opinions on that. Some people like really take it seriously. And they're like, we really shouldn't do that. And I'm like, <laughs> um, strategically, if you are running T, you want to be in and out of the shell in 45 seconds, right? This is on the this is on the L, this is in the LOC, which is the what speech of the negative? It's the first speech of the negative. Yeah, it's the first speech of the negative. You always put your theory on top. You always read theory first. Then you go into the case debate. Um, you want to be in and out of this in 45 seconds or less, strategically. That is like the agreed time. If you spend a minute on it, cool. If you're spending four minutes on T, you're not in business. Like you ain't gonna get far in the rest of the day. Okay. Cool. Um, in terms of like on the app preempting T, I think you can get really cool and tricky. Um, so at the top of case. Uh, debaters put, there's uh, the definitions part of the top of case, right, or part of your framework. Um, I think you can get really tricky with that and help preempt the T. Uh, that happens more with metaphor debates, right, um, because you have to give reasons for why the policy that you've chosen relates to the metaphor that has been presented in the resolution. Cool. So when we answer T, we kind of run our own shell. This would be coming out of the M, M, G, M. Whatever. What is the first thing that we do out of the MG for the shell? It's the exact same, just kind of backwards. Backwards and turn. <laughs> 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 Smart ass. Smart ass. Smart ass. Smart ass. Smart ass. No, not yet. Oh. That comes second. Okay. What's the other? What's the first thing we do? Come on, Al Dears. You already I know you have this. The counter and turf. The counter and turf. Right. So you have a definition that is way better than that other topicality's definition of what military intervention is. Now, MGs. If you're getting tricky with your app and you want to do something like move the fifth fleet into the Mediterranean Sea, you better have a definition of military intervention that includes something like that, okay? That way you are ready for the T debate because you know that T debate is gonna come. I think that definition would be like military intervention is an increase in presence in the surrounding area. Exactly, exactly. And you make the argument that the Mediterranean is in the surrounding area, Syria actually has a port on the Mediterranean Sea, like those kind of things, okay? That makes sense? Um, here's something that I will give some insight to. Um, for parley debaters, it's becoming more and more common to come up with definitions that aren't actually based on the literature that you kind of just pull 
roll off the top of your head. MGs, um, that's something that you might do. That's okay. Um, what ends up happening is a lot of debaters lie about where they got that definition. Yeah. A lot of debaters end up lying about because if you're just coming up with it off the top of your head, now if you're coming up with it off the top of your head and you're like, no, this is actually something that like the Fish and Wildlife game would actually say, sure, that's great, but I I know there are some debaters out there who definitely lie, um, MGs who definitely lie about where they got their definition. I know LD is totally different. I don't know if y'all are going to part of this year. Try something. Cool. Um, so anyways. Um, MGs, I would just be really ready with the definition, um, or at least know something about the literature area that you're gonna that you're gonna be debating. So if it has something to do like with regulations, just look up what regulation is really quick on Google and just have that ready to go um, and in case you need to plug it in because I think we should be fair and I don't think it's fair to lie. <laughs> so the second part, if you're an MG and you're answering topicality, is somebody already mentioned is we need. This argument should kind of happen in two ways. One is you say we meet our counter definition, but we also meet their definition of military or this is an F and F, sorry, the previous definition that we had all come up with on military intervention. We meet our definition and we meet their definition. Does anybody know why we do that? Way in case they say, no, you don't meet our definition at the right. end of the day, you can pull that across and be like, well, we need ours, so whatever. Right, right. It's like a way of kind of ensuring that you are totally 100% together and you're kind of in the hole, right? Um, debaters can be kind of tricky about that a little bit. Like, they didn't, they didn't you know, they don't meet me, you know, so they don't meet their own definition. And I, like, I think there's like an assumption game going on there, but whatever, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> um, furthermore, then we have awesome counter standards. There's two things that kind of happens here. Standards. There's two things that kind of happen here. One is you give your own standards uh, about why your counter interpretation is amazing AF, and you give reasons why their standards suck. Okay? Um, so you might say something like, limits are uniquely bad because limits destroy uh, creativity. Creativity is key to education, right? The only way that we can be creative um, uh, is through a set number of, or a set parameter uh, within this debate, which is how we learn how to have strategic viability, whatever you want to come up with. What I want to impart, especially to um, y'all, so you two have been debating for so long, is, again, we have all agreed on the structure of theory, but you all can come up with your own awesome creative arguments for why predictability is bad or why it's good. And what I recommend you do, especially if you know you're going to be in theory or if you're interested in theory or if you're an MG or an LO and you're going to be running theory, is I would go home and make, some, make a file called Theory Frontlines and just have under each you know, standard you know, whether it's a standard you want to run or not, have good and bad. Predictability, good for two reasons, bad for two reasons. Limits, good for two reasons, bad for two reasons. And just know those off the top of your head and it'll really help you on the standards debate. What are some good sources to look at to be able to like learn and create new standards like that? That's a really, I'm really happy you asked that. Um, I actually want to get to, can I come back to that? Yeah. I want to talk more about the standards debate because I think what happens is a lot of newer debaters are taught how to run theory and answer theory, but then not kind of debate it out the rest of the debate. Does that make sense? Like a lot of people will end up kicking it or they're like, Ugh, I don't know what to do with it, so I'm just going to kind of leave it here and just kind of walk away from it. We're going to light the garbage can on fire and then just go over here. Okay? <laughs> Um, so I want to talk about how to handle that later on in the debate because that is something that even though this is my fourth year of Harley, I really didn't understand until last year. Well, we're going to come back to that. So just to finish up the shell, if you are answering um, top Kelly, you have your own counter standards. And one of the things that can also happen 
underneath this is you can also give more specific reasons why their interpret why their definition is bad. So you can say like, hey judge, here's three counter standards. Here's uh, answers to their standards. Oh, also their definition is uniquely bad because it doesn't include X, Y, or Z. Right? You can kind of like the same way that you would go into a uh, go into a disset and kind of take it apart bit by bit non-unique it, turn, link turn, no link. You can do the same thing with theory. I think debaters get become afraid of like touching people's definitions or uh, interpretations and they kind of just leave it. And then they all shove all of their offense or their defense into the standards debate. And it's like, no, take apart their definition. Say that the Department of Defense is a piece of crap. They totally suck. And they've never been audited before, so how the hell do we know what these people are talking about? That's me getting a tip about that. Don't go for that Alvin Jones. I've got it. I'm on the other side of the table for that. So, finally, in answering comicality, we run voters' defense. So, I think this gets weird for a lot of debaters. <coughs> You know better, it's not the actual students, okay? <laughs> so just like how um, on disads you might impact turn um, a disad, and you might say like, if somebody runs a disad that's like, uh, democracy is really good, you might impact turn that and say, no, democracy is uniquely bad, it cedes power to capitalist entities, which uh, uniquely decreases or uniquely increases the amount of poverty that we all live in, blah blah blah. You can impact her in voters in the same way. You can say, look, first of all, education, not unique, like we all kind of end well, not really not unique. But you can say like for education you can say um, loss of education is inevitable. Because we ultimately if you know we set out the the, the PMC and the LOC we don't know how the debate is going to look by the time we get down to the rebuttals. So if you're like aiming for a certain kind of education out of this round, you're guessing at, the, at your very best, right? I have had so many debates that start with like, you know, military intervention on the app, and then it's like, no, we need to talk about imperialism and how imperialism is really bad. <laughs> so you can do the same thing for this. You can also say that there's no impact to fairness, right? The fairness in debate ultimately is a question of how much prep you've had, uh, how much resources your team has. Um, generally the teams that do, I don't know if I would necessarily say this in a round, but just to give you an idea of some of like the directions that you can go with fairness. So, um, yeah, here's the part that I think, uh, let's get into the standards debate, which is where we're gonna like, go into this. So in terms of voters' defense for the affirmative, it's not necessarily a question of, it's theory versus theory, right? It's, it's running theory versus answering theory, so it's not really a question of like, what does the app run and what should the name run? If you are answering theory, your goal is to basically say, well, theory doesn't matter. We should have a very high threshold for debating, for voting on theory. Does that make sense? So what ends up happening is the AF will go for something called reasonability. Reasonability and education are the two most important voters for the affirmative. And the reason we do that is because we want to try and push the threshold way up. So that we say, look, judges, as long as we're reasonably topical, as long as we are reasonably within the realm of the planet Earth, third rock from the sun, the Milky Way galaxy, as long, that's what that, that's what, that's fine, I do do that. Um, as long as we are reasonably topical, we should be focusing on education. And the only way that we garner education in this round is if we debate. And that's why you will go 
once the standards debate kind of comes down to it, on the AF, or excuse me, when you are answering theory, you want to go for reasonability education. Because you want to increase that threshold to vote on theory. On the negative, it is entirely the opposite. On the negative, you want precision. You want to go for competing interpretations. Because you want the judge to take the inter and the counter inter and to get really, 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 really specific with it. Okay? You want to go for competing interpretations, not to be confused with counter inter, I always do that. Um, and usually something like precision. Because what you want to do is you want to lower the threshold for why we vote on theory. Because you want to make it easier to win on theory. Does that kind of help with like the whole where we go with standards and voters? It's something I'm still learning also myself, I'm trying to better comprehend because holy shit. It like to me it kind of comes down to like, well, what does precision mean? Right? Like if I'm if I'm saying like our interpretation matters because we have to be super precise. Precision is the internal link to education or, uh, uh, or uh, predictability, which is the internal link to education. I really want there to be a tiny, tiny amount of room in which the judge can can live in this little box that I create, and I say you have to vote right here. Okay. I really want to make it a small space. On the AF, no, 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 we're blowing this shit up. We want to go way out here and we want to talk about how reasonability in education is amazing. The only way that we get education is if we debate. It's kind of coming down to a, over here, answering theory, you say theory doesn't matter without saying that. And over here, on uh, when running theory, you want to say, no, theory really matters, right? Because you're trying to you're trying to decrease the distance that it would take for a judge to vote on theory. Is that helping? I'm trying yeah. to like make my metaphors like really work here. Visual, <laughs> visual <laughs> aids here. <laughs> um, does that kind of help? I, I kind of get what you're what you're going for. It's like if it, it, there's a specific. Um, I would say axis that you want the judge to vote on where up here is your opponent and down here is you right. and you want it to be as close to you as possible. Right. You wanna yeah, you wanna bring the judge more to your side, right? Because the theory is like a pull one way, pull the other way. You wanna bring the judge closer to why they would vote on competing interpretations. When answering theory, you wanna bring them closer to why they would vote on reasonable. Yeah, they're reasonably talkable. They have a reasonable definition. We're good. So the Meg is basically trying to like make it as small as possible, right? And the app is just trying to like Yes. They just put it out there but they don't want to touch it more too much. Yes. Because they know it's like not that legit. Well I mean But yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean we're head we're heading in that direction. Um, I think like don't think of theory as like an app versus an A. Because I think debaters, like, that's one of my problems is that I got really hung up on, like, well, why does the negative go for competing interpretations and precision? I can go for precision good on the affirmative, right? Yeah. And that would, like, really confuse me. But really what you're trying to do, instead of thinking about it in terms of, like, app versus thing theory, you should think about it in terms of running theory, answering theory. When I'm running theory, I want to be... Uh, as um, as precise as possible. When I'm answering theory, we all just need to be reasonable here, okay? Does that make sense? So yeah. it's like poking holes in defense, just theory. Oh yeah. I mean these are these are it's it's offense versus defense, mm -hmm. right? It's offensive arguments help you win. Defensive arguments prevent the other team from winning, mm -hmm. right? So I will give like five reasons why precision is good. 
Um, my partner wrote a six-page <laughs> file um, uh, that included a standard, um, and they were all standards, or all reasons why reasonability is bad. And one of them was like, uh, jet fuel melts steel, steel beams. If we all can't agree on the truth, then we all will start like, you know, grasping at other kinds of kinds of truths. <laughs> you know. Um, so you, again, like, get creative with how the standards debate works out. Debaters get told, run this show, and then they're not taught how to collapse to the show, right? So if you are on, if you are running theory, you want to bring that judge so close, make it so precise. This is why our counterinterpretation is absolutely amazing AF. You're going to vote right here. Precision is good for these reasons. When you are answering theory, we just need to be reasonable here. We want to debate. We need to get to the educational part of this debate. Does that make sense? Cody, you look per perplexed. No. Um, I was just saying anything else. OK. Um, so for. Oh, and one more thing. When you run topicality, you should be dramatic as hell. <laughs> you know how there's like those soccer players who get hurt, but they're not really hurt? And it's like, they get on the ground and they're like, oh my god! And they start crying like it's the end of their career. And then they realize nobody is around them. And they just kind of get up and walk away. You should be so dramatic. I once heard a debater who's amazing. She was like, I didn't get to run my sick ass China to sad. You know, like, so, don't say sick ass. But I didn't get to run my amazing China to sad. Right? Like, make it look like you have lost an opportunity to case debate. Make it look like I have lost education in this round. I have lost an opportunity to debate about the substance of this debate. It's super dramatic. Um, can we talk about, if, unless there's any questions, can we talk about effects topicality and extra topicality? Um, so, sometimes, I don't know how I would recommend this, it depends on what kind of a realm you are in as a debater. Um, some teams will run like a little thing under the violation or under the inter where they say like, you are also effects topical or you're also extra topical for these reasons. I personally wouldn't go that route. I don't think that, there's just, I think there's like different ways to adjudicate uh, effects topicality and extra, extra topicality that are different than just questions of definition, right? Because when you start getting into the realm of effects topicality and extra topicality, I think those are questions of like procedure, how you are proceeding with your advantages, with your plan. Does that make sense? So that's why I would keep them separate. Can anybody tell me what effects topicality is? Your plan doesn't meet the burden of the resolution through the plan itself, but rather through a tangent effect of the plan. Yeah. A plank. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. So in the case of the, let's we'll talk about the LD resolution just for a second. And um, because I think there's some interesting things going on there. Um, it's the USFG uh, should significantly increase substantially increase act, uh, should substantially increase the role. Act, the role no, should substantially actions by the US Cyber Command to protect no. No. to prevent complex catastrophes and or protect. Um, critical, critical infrastructure. infrastructure. Uh, the oh. critical infrastructure and complex catastrophe have been switched. We're in the way. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's the beginning of the year. I don't know the rest of the time. No, nobody no, no, no. no. Actions yeah. is the keyword that you want. Though. Okay, actions. Okay, so um, for non Carly debaters, or non LD debaters, um, one of the, the cases that's kind of coming out right now that a lot of debaters are looking to run is something called the NI, NIST framework. And it's specifically a policy action um, that would essentially set up a whole like oversight 
of cybersecurity that's run by Cyber Command. My question is, like, it's to prevent, what is it? It's like to prevent um, complex catastrophe. Let's just say it's death. Wait, is this the uh, resolution for like healthy people? Yeah. Oh, okay. Catasto. Whatever. I can't say. Wait, is this the policy? Is this also the policy resolution? No. The policy resolution is has to do with the president. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, my question is, how is setting up a framework preventing complex catastrophe? Like you're just setting up a framework to me. So that seems pretty effects talkable. Like you're doing something in order to do something. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. The only thing I would add, um, I was reading a, a text by William Bennett, who's a very, very successful debate coach and author. and. He also agrees that effects topicality is a, a kill shot for the negative, but they win it unless the resolution itself necessitates it. And so I'm going to let her continue, but yeah. I would just throw that out there. Yeah. Normally, you all are conditioned to think if I win effects T, I win the round. Yeah. Very rarely have I seen a res like this that almost has a great affirmative argument saying, we have to do it, and if the res itself necessitates us being effects T, we are resolutional. And here's the theory, William right. Bennett. I agree with that. I totally, yeah, I totally agree with that. I think another really good example of this is a round that I debated a couple years ago, where um, it was a resolution having to do with the FDA um, doing something about junk food. I can't remember what it was specifically. Um, the FDA doesn't actually have a definition of junk food. So what the AF team did was they were like, we have to create a definition of junk food. And I was like, no, we can't do that. <laughs> we actually just have to do something about junk food. <laughs> like, I don't care what it is, just do something about junk food, right? Um, How's right? It does necessitate that. And I think also the same argument could be made. Oh, are we running out of time? Uh, no, no, you, you, um, you, I would, the next one goes off at 10, 15. Got it. And I just want to grab a couple markers. Oh, take it, please, take it. Okay, take that. You can take that. Um, I think Hal's absolutely right, and that's one of the arguments that you can make on the app. One of the things that I would go back to say about the standards debate is that a lot of debaters will memorize all of these very generic blocks, and they will spit them out at you, and then they won't say anything else. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, what happened? <laughs> you just gave me all of these generic blocks. I don't know what to do now. Um, I think that. Um, those are, while generic blocks are really important, I also think that giving some more intrinsic or specific arguments for or against, um, especially in theory, really helps to contextualize. So judges have different ideas about where they, what their threshold on theory is and where they vote on theory and why they vote on theory. Um, and I think that if you get a little bit more intrinsic and you say like, no, in this specific instance, you should be voting on theory for these reasons. And I think Hal is right. In this specific instance, like the app is top. Why? <laughs> right. What's the, all right, cool. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Um, no, wait, five minutes. That's fine. Um, well, you have five minutes until the next one starts, though. They all seem to Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, but you're going right around the corner. That's fine. Anyways, um, so I would always try to Insert some generics, but also try to get some like more specifics in there. Okay, so effects topical. You do something in order to do something. Extra topical is you are doing something and a little something else. You've made the cake in. You can yeah. Right there. yeah. Uh,
amazingly, I have never seen or actually had run or ran uh, extra tall Cali in my entire debate career. I don't I was thinking about that this morning and I was like, this shit's never happened. <laughs> this is weird. So I don't even have an example. Um, <laughs> like puppies and dogs. Uh, Resolution says to give everyone a dog, you give everyone a puppy and kid. There we go. Right. I think the big thing to remember for extra topicality is that you gain impacts that you wouldn't have otherwise gained through the resolution, right? That you get these extra beautiful impacts, like um, for military or for this, like, you know, I get these extra amazing impacts because I make a, a I don't know, I don't even know. Um, I, I make the federal government amazing, right? I get these amazing impacts. I just I totally confirm how awesome the federal government is. With the NIST framework, you're not just protecting critical infrastructure, you're also protecting non-critical infrastructure. Uh, see, I don't even agree with that. <laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> hey, I'm just trying to... <laughs> I don't even know why this is extra tea, because I don't think it's extra tea. Don't worry about it. Anyways, does that make sense? You, if, like, and don't get, don't panic when you are the negative, and you hear an app, and you hear their plan tags, and you're like, oh my god, they're little, 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 little. No, just be like, in a reasonable world, would you reasonably get these kinds of impacts from this resolution? I don't think so, they're going to on your shelf, okay? And even if, like, just do it. Like, I, like, don't let people get away with, like, these extra beautiful impacts that give them an extra voting issue at the end of the round. Okay? Any questions? Who else did anyone talk about? Um, yeah, get dramatic. Running theory, answer theory. Um, you know, you can be. You can be tricky with your affirmative. Um, there are people who very famously uh, have run things, uh, like for example, with the resolution um, "No Fly Zone in Bolivia." They literally ran a "No Fly" like and malaria kind of thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't do that unless you were ready to defend it. But you know, you can do things out of the affirmative that kind of help preempt the team kind of maybe avoid that debate or puts a ton of offense um, already in your, uh, a ton of offense against theory already in your, uh, in your plant text or in your top case area. Cool. Uh, another more famous one Hal will tell you about is that um, the resolution was um, and the death penalty and they ran and the AF ran uh, the death tax. <laughs> not, not the actual ending of you know, state murder, state sanctioned murder, but get rid of the death tax. When you die, you have to pay a tax to the government, right? And when you hit those, when you have those kinds of apps, just look at the judge and just be like, <laughs> nobody would assume that, like nobody would assume the death tax, okay? Nobody would assume flies to stop fly-borne illnesses. Right? Nobody would have, like, it's not reasonable, okay? Does that make sense? Um, get creative with your theory. Here's something that I will impart to you as a figure. Um, if anybody ever says that your theory is a position of privilege, okay? Um, theory is oftentimes, I pick this up from Jay Burks, theory is oftentimes, um, in the real world, a mechanism or oftentimes the only mechanism in which poor and people of color have as a defense against the state, right? Because they procedurally, the court procedurally screws up, or they didn't, they weren't read their Miranda rights, or they were kicked while they were in jail. It is not a position of privilege. In the real world, this is how people of color and poor individuals, it is the only defense that they have against the state. So don't ever let somebody say, your theory is a position of privilege. Get good at theory. Do not be afraid of it. Practice it. 
run it, work on your standards, um, come up with your own amazing reasons why your standards are amazing and their standards are bad. You will hear this, especially for you as a second semester debater, you will hear grounds, limits, and predictability a thousand times before you leave this activity. I know right now that if I gave you 20 minutes, you could come up with three reasons for each of those why those are bad. Okay? Use your imagination. We've all agreed on the shell. We've all agreed on how theory should look. We have never agreed on everything else beyond that is debatable. So get super creative with your standards and your voters, okay? Go to the next section. <laughs>